On Monday, millions of folks using mobile phones and digital cameras will document what has been dubbed the Great American Eclipse and rapidly post snaps of the sun's corona peaking from behind the moon on Instagram and Facebook. The anticipated deluge of social media will doubtless benefit those unable to see the spectacle firsthand. But make no mistake, Eclipse veterans say photos do not compare to the splendor of truly standing in the moon's shadow. Total solar eclipses are not rare and occur, on average, every 18 months. Many can only be seen from remote oceans, deserts and icy wastes. Monday's event is remarkable because it cuts right across the world's third most populous nation. Viewers can watch the moon's shadow in 14 states, starting at 10.16 a.m. near Lincoln Beach, Oregon, and then race across mountains, woods and prairies to reach McClellanville, South Carolina, 93 minutes later at 2.49 p.m., local times. More than 200 million people live within a one-day drive of the path of totality, the 110 kilometers wide tract along which the sun is wholly obscured except for the ghostly glow of its corona, driving talk of the most viewed eclipse in history. All of North America will experience a partial eclipse, though Brandenburg warns anybody outside the zone of totality will not see the sun's corona. Even a 99% obscuration comes a distant second to the marvel of a full eclipse. Viewers are advised to wear special sunglasses to avoid eye damage from the sun's rays. Thousand Oaks Optical, an Arizona-based supplier, has sold enough filters this year to produce some 100 million pairs of shades. Experts also warn of defective knockoffs flooding the market. Eclipse chasers have thus had years to prepare, studying weather charts to predict cloud-free viewing spots. The West is best, apparently, with many folks bound for inland Oregon, Idaho, Wyoming, and Nebraska to dodge any rain clouds further east. But there is no perfect strategy. Wildfires are already burning in Oregon and tinder dry vegetation vulnerable to fire across the western region threatens to bring smoky skies, sudden road closures and shuttered campsites. Rangers are on high alert as motorists flock to the remote national forests and rangelands from the Cascades to the northern Rockies, clogging roads and straining resources as hoteliers and airlines jack up their prices. As many as 30,000 people are expected to flock to Stanley, Idaho, which is normally home to just 68 year round residents. Depot Bay, Oregon, is near the site where the total eclipse will first appear. Local gift store owner Pat O'Connell predicts a double ground zero of visitor chaos. Scientists are animated too. NASA plans to fly high altitude balloons and planes for physics experiments. U.S. science satellites will observe the Sun and Earth. The U.S. Space Agency will also broadcast the eclipse live from locations along the path. Despite having 33 total solar eclipses under his belt, he still gets wowed by the reddish horizon glow, the shadow bands snaking across the landscape and as bright beads of sunlight shine through the valleys on the edge of the moon. There are adventurous ways to view the event. Some spectators will board aircraft that soar above any clouds and follow the path of the eclipse, making it last longer than the roughly two and a half minutes enjoyed by those at ground level. Those aboard Royal Caribbean's Total Eclipse cruise can watch the extravaganza after listening to Bonnie Tyler belt out her 1983 hit Total Eclipse of the Heart, with the vessel positioned in the path of totality off Florida's coast. The spectacle will be the first in 99 years to span the entire continental U.S. and the first total solar eclipse visible anywhere in the lower 48 states since 1979. It follows a difficult few weeks in a politically charged America.